Here is the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid SEL Front Wheel Drive in Serenity White Pearl. This is all new, a six or seven seat design. Third row, front or rear wheel drive configuration. And if you don't want that eight speed dual wet clutch automatic transmission, this is the answer. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna to touch bases on some pros and cons. The problem that I have in comparable rivals in the front fascia, we're gonna start off with a full redesign. So the H-styled LED headlights that integrate into the light bar. With the new flat Hyundai badging, it's gonna be silver for SEL and limited trim. Go up to the calligraphy because you can only option three trims on the hybrid. It's gonna be black. Front parking sensors are standard. Satin aluminum on the lower with the active grill shutter. Because they don't offer an XRT, unfortunately, seven inches of clearance is all you're gonna get. But what you're getting here, a 1.6 liter turbocharged GDI four-cylinder hybrid engine with a combined of 231 horsepower, 271 pound-feet of torque, and it is paired to a six-speed Shiftronic automatic transmission. So you don't have to be concerned about that dual wet clutch like I was saying at the beginning. And you're achieving 36 MPGs for the city, 35 MPGs for the highway. So if you are thinking about the non-hybrid, you're getting 16 more MPGs with this, six more MPGs more to the highway, and you'll still receive the fenders that flare out with the matte black that's going to surround it. 18 inch wheels is standard. A 20 inch goes into the limited. The calligraphy will get a dark finished 20 inch wheel with the side badging of the Santa Fe and the gloss black materials around all of the window trims and the raised roof rails, but no handle on the side to get up onto the roof rails because it's not the XRT trim. It's gonna have that Land Rover Defender style. It also can look like the Ford Flex, but this is a little bit more picked up, a little bit more wide because the flares fender out. So I like the more sporty design that Hyundai goes after. Power side view mirrors will start on the limited trim, but the integrated turn signals, those are still going to be LED. So really the only differences between trims is a few aesthetics on the exterior. Towing goes up to 2000 pounds, so you will lose a little bit there. Whereas the standard gas variant is at 3,500 pounds, going into the XRT at 45. 500 pounds. And when I'm thinking the rivals like Toyota and Honda, Honda doesn't have a third row hybrid. So the CRV is going to be too small when you're comparing this. And if you go into the pilot, it's going to be a little bit larger than this. And then towing capabilities and usability is going to be a little bit more there. But then you got savings plus fuel savings. And when you go to Toyota, if you go into a RAV4, it's going to be too small yet again. And then when you go into the Highlander, it's about the same size, but the configuration for the third row here is better because we have increased the length and it's a little bit wider than the prior gen. The rear is gonna get standard LED taillights and the exhaust will be tucked underneath with rear parking sensors and a reverse camera. The 360 degree reverse camera starts on the limited tier. The calligraphy will get a digital rear view mirror. And I like how it's cleaned up but I dislike how long the back is because it looks like the rear is sagging in the suspension and going back to rival perspective, none of them will be able to fit 220 pounds that you could fit on the roof of the Santa Fe hybrid. Standard power lift gate going into 14.6 cubic feet and yes, the whole back will open up but it gives a lot more space from corner to corner with a storage nook, 12 volts underneath the floor. Has a little storage nook on the side. Split fold, the third row at a 50-50 split. That's going to increase cargo to 40.5 cubic feet, which is 4.1 cubic feet more than the prior gen. And the best part, to maximize the 79.6, just push these buttons. And that's going to increase cargo by 7.5 inches from the prior gen. Standard 10-way power seat adjustment for the driver with standard heated front seats and the H-Tech seating. If you want the leather, you have to go up to the limited. Ventilated and heated seats will also be on the limited tier. Headroom and leg room. The refresh not only gives us a little bit more space in the interior, and it now features a UVC sanitizer glove box, which starts on the limited trim. I like these soft materials that's found throughout. Heads up display is only on the calligraphy as well as a digital rear view mirror. Home link and auto dimming start on the limited tier. Curve one panel two screens is standard with a 12.3 
touchscreen navigation comes into play on the limited tier, as well as a 360 degree reverse camera. Full trajectory for the SEL, just a reverse camera, unfortunately. You can line it up for the toe, and you can also make the screen wider by clicking this. Dual climate controls is standard with the driver mode select on the 4.2 information display that has three different driving modes. 12.3 gauge cluster starts on the limited tier. Two USB ports, standard wireless charger, and the key fob for the new hybrid Santa Fe. Underneath, we'll get a 12 volt and a full pass through, and it's going to be soft to touch. Opens up this way, and it will open up through the back Plus, you can pull this up so you have a more deep storage pocket. LED interior lights are going to be found throughout. 12-speaker Bose sound system starts on the limited tier and goes up to the calligraphy. Door panel and dashboard integrate in together, and I like the seamless air vent that goes all the way through because even here, they just mask it really good, just polishing it off. Standard leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function. Paddle shifts, the stocks, and now the gear lever is on the steering column, so it clears up this space here, giving us the optimal pass through. Door panel, it's gonna have soft materials where it needs to be. One touch up and down for the windows and a medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. Ambient lighting starts on the limited tier. For the second row, headroom and leg room. And if you put it about midway so I can fit in the back, that's the way it's going to sit with USB ports behind both of the front seats. You have storage, and you can open this up from the front to the back to make it easy. And I like the pattern that is found throughout the interior. If you want the manual sunshade, you have to go up to the limited tier door panel. You can see you can easily fit a cell phone here, and you get two cup holders with another cup or bottle holder in the bottom, and it's soft to touch where it needs to be. Sliding into the center, you basically have your own feet space. But leg and shoulder space is not necessarily compromised. And the same thing with knee space. You have a sufficient amount of room, even headroom. Entering into the back, push the button. It's gonna roll forward. And now you have plenty of room to fit two more. I have positioned the seats all the way back and just the way it would be normally. And I've reclined this seat so you can see the fan speed control for the third row with cup holders. If you want the USB ports, you gotta go up to the limited and the same thing with the dual panel moonroof and it will carry on into the calligraphy. Headroom, it's not bad at all. Gonna slide these seats back about midway so you can see that you can fit an adult but if they are reclining, it will be a little tough. 231 horsepower out of this 1.6 liter turbocharged GDI four cylinder hybrid engine and 271 pound feet of torque. That's 40 ish horsepower less than the gas variant. But let's see the power. It felt like it was taken off because it transitioned from battery to combustion engine. So it, it had a really nice little note that came into it. I actually enjoyed that quite a bit. So you do have pretty decent performance and this is not what this vehicle is meant for. It's meant for those MPGs and for the daily use. That's why they've made it a third row variant. I would have liked to see an XRT trim though, just because it gives you the aesthetics plus the ground clearance and more capabilities of towing, but I do understand this is a hybrid, so you're not really trying to achieve a lot of towing or payload. Again, it's day in and day out use. Storage nooks, they did a great job. A lot of room throughout the cabin and moving the gear lever on the steering column works in this trim. In some of the Hyundai variants, because I'm tall, it will hit your knee. It's going to take me some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros is when you go SEL, you get a lot of bang for your buck. It's around four, it's around $500 more than the gas variant, but I'm getting better MPGs. And if you drive like me, which I drive a ton, I literally fill my vehicle up every single week. And that's about 17 to 18 gallons, maybe three, 400 miles a week I do, if not more. Within a month or two, I would have recouped that $500-ish increase in price. Another pro, no dual wet clutch automatic transmission, so no concerns. It's a six speed Steptronic automatic transmission. I like that we have the curve one panel. I dislike that we do not get standard navigation because we are near a $40,000 price point, but when you only have three trims, I get it. You have to kind of 
can figure it a way to put people into the next trim, which the limited I feel is the sweet spot. This is getting your feet wet kind of for comfort, everyday use, gives you a blend of charging and it gives you a taste of what you're going to get. But the limited goes a little bit further because you're going to get more charging ports and you're going to be getting the leather seats with ventilated and heated front seats. Going into the calligraphy obviously gets all the bells and whistles, heads up display, auto dimming rear view mirror with a digital rear view mirror kind of wish that they had an auto dimming rear view mirror here and you do not receive some of the safety configurations that you will get on the limited tier. Some cons about the vehicle, I'm a little picky so I would not pick this gray on gray because it just shows every single thing. So color combos, you want to be careful with what you choose if you are planning to keep this long term. But some real cons is going into the third row. It is a little bit more cramped for somebody that's over six foot tall. Kind of wish it would expand more forward, maybe raise the lower butt of the back seat or second row seat up, therefore making it a little bit easier to access into the third row. And we don't necessarily get a third climate control in the third row. We have it where you can configure the fan speed but it's only in the third row not in the second row which doesn't make too much sense because a lot of people typically use the second row more so than the third row steering to the vehicle is light it doesn't feel that much longer but it does feel a lot more wide braking is good and it's regenerative braking which you would expect that because of the hybrid trim and when I'm thinking about the rivals, this fits in at a sweet spot because you're getting more interior space and more storage nooks and capabilities for a hybrid trim compared to Honda or Toyota. It actually outclasses Honda because if you go into the CRV, you're not getting third row. And if you go into the Pilot, you're not getting hybrid. So you don't have that happy medium, whereas they have that in the Santa Fe. The problem that I have though with the new Santa Fe is they have increased the price in which it puts you at a Palisade pricing more or less. Now obviously that's going to be more towards the base trim and you're not going to receive a hybrid variant but you're going to receive a more powerful vari variant and more capabilities. Turn radius is going to be about two lanes and let's rock and roll. It just takes off. It's a fun vehicle when it wants to be or when you need it to be and it's still practical and yet an everyday driving vehicle and you're getting great mpgs but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank Gettle hyundai of lakewood for giving us this 2024 hyundai santa fe hybrid sel for our car review